Let there be light. Let's crack on. Hello, and welcome to another Mr. Beat the Bike video. And this one's a little bit different insofar as we're going a little bit in depth into replacing the DC DC AC voltage converter uh, from the Sony C5. Uh, to a modern equivalent. Um, you may well have seen these on eBay um, being sold um, and they're not cheap but uh, yeah let's see if they do the job, what they're like, um, if indeed they're worth the money and uh, yeah I mean I suppose ultimately you know, if you want to spend a hundred pounds to get your clock and counter working then maybe that that is worth it but uh yeah um let's go to uh investigative beta bite and uh crack on okay so the first uh dc dc converter module that i i tried um probably about three four years ago now was this one um again bought, bought off ebay is about let's just over 70 pounds i think which is a lot of money really um, but these use these rather good XP um, XP power DC DC converter modules, uh, three of them to provide the six volt rail for the um, or provide six volts for the heaters for the VFD. You got the minus twenty six for the uh, to drive the the display itself, um, which I think was actually minus thirty volts, and then it was a thirty volt for the tuning. So. Yeah, and that worked quite well. Um, one of the modules got really hot, and one of them um, had a tendency to squeal a bit as well. I don't know whether the one that was getting hot was also the one that was squealing. may well have been, but I couldn't really ever fully isolate it. Um, but that's still going strong. Um, it seemed to work very well. Uh, you could see the heaters were being overdriven, though, in the VFD, so it invariably will shorten the life. But uh, the one that's on eBay at the moment is this one, and uh, this is the one I'm going to test now. Uh, now this one um, only provides, uh, it actually provides 5 volts for the heater, and 30 volts, uh, the, or the minus 30 volts um, for the minus 26 rail. So uh, yeah, if we just have a look, um, it's using Traco power modules. Um, TMA 1215D, uh, which is the minus 30 volts, so that gives plus 15, minus 15, but if obviously you don't connect the ground, um, you can actually get the spread of minus 30 um, volts uh, by connecting the positive to ground, and then the other side is minus 30 volts. other one is providing 5 volts, so... Um, can see here so we've got the 5 volt one 200 milliamps so it's not much then we've got the uh, TMA 1215s which is uh, 15 volts um, it's actually the 1215d I've highlighted the wrong one there um, so s is single D is dual um, so you've got plus 15 minus 15 of 34 milliamps um, so the draw is very, very little, uh, but of course you don't get the tuning. But is that such a bad thing? There's no tuning there? Um, I don't think so. I think that's fair enough. Um, these modules are about £5 um, each. Um, and um, yeah, plus postage or whatever, but they're, they're about £5 to, to buy. Um, so if we just have a look at the actual... Um, circuits. You can see here what what should be there. Um, so pin one and two. That's twelve volts. That's chassis, ground, common. Um, that's the twelve volts in. Um, then you've got pin three, which is your thirty-eight volts. Comes up to here. CM six five one. And pin four. Uh, is your minus 26 and then pin 5 6 
that's your AC for your um, AC 3.8 volts up here. So, yeah, I'm sort of interested to see how well this works and just what the voltages are um, when it's actually in circuit, because obviously they'll pull down a fair bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so I'm going to fit the module in this machine. Um, this one was featured in a, another video not so long ago. So let's... This is the detailed <laughs> version of installing this. Um, it looks really easy at first, but you do actually have to take out the power supply to do this. Okay, so it's actually quite a while since I've done one of these, so uh, let's see if I can remember all the screws you have to take out. So now there's two on the black plastic bit. And then I think it's two screws here. They're just standard, they're not the normal um, Sony smaller screws. Then there's this screw here. And then I think we've got two screws here and this there's actually a little cable, little cable management thing there to watch out for. Variably, I think it gets left out, but I'll try and put it back in. And then one here. Not the easiest thing to see. And then I think it's just this one screw down here now. And there's a grounding uh, wire there as well. And that should want to come free. Right, super. So very gingerly i'm going to take these off i have had these connectors fall apart um before now the plastic plastic can get very brittle on some of these machines um uh, with the connectors um and yeah it can be a real nuisance to be honest um i don't I'm, i assume you probably still get these plastic bits but um yeah you'd have to very carefully Transfer all the wires. And I seem to remember there was a cheat where you didn't actually have to worry about lifting this board because of the hinge here. And let me see if I can do it or whether I'm remembering incorrectly. I'm not doing that again, <laughs> but that's out. So that's super. So then we've just got these three screws. Um, yeah, and they're little. They're the short self-tappers, can't really see that. And then you've got these two screws on the back to lift that board out, which are really very tight. There we go. And then you've got the 12 volt in from the mains side of the power supply. And there we have it. There it is in all its glory. Um, these caps tend to be okay. Uh, it is just literally the the DC-DC AC converter. They, they you can actually see the voltages and the pinouts. So uh, yeah, I'll get this uh, desoldered.
Okay, so that's uh, installed and um, it all looks pretty good. Nice and flush to the board as well. Um, one thing worth noting is you don't have to take out that screw. In fact, it's not a bad idea to leave it in actually because it does help give uh, a bit more strength so you're not tugging on this uh, regulator. Uh, because this is the heatsink for it, or the heatsink drain for it. So, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's all looking good. So, let's get this back together. Okay, so put this on first. It's just a bit easier to do it now. And then, and this, this is on all of them. I'd just forgotten, to be honest. Um. Spot the deliberate mistake. That is actually fouling it getting into the proper location. Let's try that again. Like I say, I don't really like putting it in this way. <laughs> but well I've done it once and I'll do it again, but I don't think I'll be doing it another machine I don't know it seems to it seems fine actually it just seems a bit brutal uh, so that is now locating properly Okay, so next this fun one. Well, I got that through <laughs> the cable management first time and into the hole. That's that's pretty good going. And now this one. Just got these two screws on the back. There we go. Okay, well here goes. Let's try it. Yeah, super. We have a clock. That actually doesn't look too bad. Um, a, B, reduction off, dim, right. Yeah, so it's actually really good. Uh, it actually looks brighter on the camera than it does in person. But uh, yeah, there we go. So um, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed sort of just um, seeing a clock get revived on a C9. Um... Okay, so I'm just going to interrupt myself here. Uh, one thing I know probably you'd want to know is what these voltages actually look like um, with the machine on. And uh, I did forget, so I'm doing this after the event. So what are we looking at? We're looking at... Um, Pin three on six five one, which is white, um, a white connector, um, 
that one, isn't it? So we've actually got minus 31. That's a bit high. Um, I wouldn't have thought that would cause too many problems. But it's worth noting that that voltage is quite negative. <laughs> um, the other one I'm intrigued to have a look at is on CN655. It's pin two and three. Well, wasn't expecting that. That surely cannot be right. There's a five volt drop. That's really interesting. There's a five volt drop across there, so that is working. That's that's weird. I mean, it works. That's really weird, though, how that that reads. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's fun. Yeah, so, I mean, it's been on a while now, um, heat-wise, I mean, they're pretty much cool, and there's no noise from them at all. So it's it's working, it's doing the job. Um, obviously, you do have, you've lost the tuning, so if you're going to, I don't know why you would want to do this, but if you plug in a video recorder into the RF in and try, try and tune this in, it ain't going to work. Um, but, um, otherwise, yeah, and, you know, the display doesn't look too overdriven. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, let's cut back. Uh, but I'd be really interested in your comments on that, um, DC-DC converter, um, from eBay, and, uh, what experiences you've found, and, indeed, if there's a better way to do it. Uh, but with that, thank you very much for watching. Uh, be great if you'd like and subscribe as well. It really does mean a lot to me. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.